Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Adorama TV's How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week is an episode that I love because I'm a baseball nut and we got to hang out with John Willie, who is the team photographer and manager of imaging services for the Arizona Diamondbacks. You can see some more of his work at johnwillie.com, but we got to go out and hang out in the dugout and have a conversation and talk all about Major League Baseball and what it's like being a photographer. So here's our interview with John Willie. We're here at Chase Field with John Willie, and I want to call him Wiley, but I won't do it. John Willie. And so, John, uh, you have been shooting here for how long? Five years? This is my fifth season, yep. Fifth season. So tell us what your day is normally like when you're not shooting a, a baseball game. What's the prep you have to do? What are you doing? Uh, is, you know, what, what happens? Kind of depends on what we have uh, going on. A lot of what we do, um, you know, is at my desk uh, with editing images from the night before game. Um, we shoot probably about uh, anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 images a game personally. Uh, between my intern and my assistant, that adds up. So uh, we spend a lot of our mornings uh, editing last night's take, picking out the selects, seeing what we like, um, and then um, we get that done. My archivist works on uh, works on it all from there. Uh, and then normally, what I do, um, it depends on what I have that day. A lot of times, I have I'll have a portrait uh, for uh, the magazine or um, for anything else that we may use it for. Um, so. Then I'll go into prepping for the portrait, getting my lighting set up, um, and uh, a lot of that, and then working with the marketing and the creative services team on anything that they may need from me, finding images for them. So let's talk about uh, game day. Okay. So the D-backs are playing, yep. um, and uh, visiting team is coming in. What is that day like for you? We have our shot sheets that we go through. Uh, the game operation sends us everything that's going to happen that day. Um, a lot of what we shoot is not game action. A very small percentage of what we shoot uh, is actually the players on the field. Um, so I go through all of my requests that I've received for that day, uh, and I go and those through requests for things like what? Things like the first ceremonial first pitch, any sort of pregame recognitions that may happen. Um, we have contractual obligations to our sponsors for the kids that deliver the baseball, the kids that run out on the field with the players. All that we have to cover. Those people get pictures of all that. Gotcha. Um, so we go through and we make highlights and we make notes of everything that we need to shoot um, that, that isn't game action. So it's almost um, like shooting a wedding, actually. It really is. So you have, There's, you've got the father, We're, we're the minute by minute. Yet. Yeah, right. absolutely. We're, we're literally minute, actually second by second as, as, as the game are planned out by the second. Um, and the sheets are huge. I mean, one game takes seven uh, big, long tabloid sheets of paper for the game ops crew. But I succinctly put mine down to one page. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the other things that um, that the Diamondbacks do. I'm sure other Major League Baseball teams do all over the country. And that is, um, you've got uh, Little League teams. Mm -hmm. You've got um, fundraising events, charity events, all of that kind of stuff. Do you participate in those as well? Absolutely. 100% uh, of those we shoot. Um, a big part of what we do is is reaching out to the community, and we have our diamonds back fields um, that we give back, and usually there's a player involved every time. We go out and cover all that. Um, we you know we work with all the player uh, hospital visits. We shoot those all the time for our marketing and for those kids. We send those pictures back to them because it's really important. It's a huge thing for, for the kids to get to see these baseball players and put a you know the human side to them. So, so for the guy or girl that's out there thinking, I want to be a Major League Baseball photographer because I love the game, I want to see the game and shoot that yeah. and go home, probably not the job no. for them. No, uh, right. it's very much, uh, and I'm one of, one of, I think it's about six guys, there's 30 guys who do what I do. There's six of us who do it full time for the team. A majority of people are actually contract photographers. Well, let's talk a little bit about the actual shooting now. Okay. So you can see behind us we have some lenses, some small guys like this, which you know is uh, <laughs> this is a 4028. You've got um, look at that can in there, uh, and this is a full IS lens. Uh huh. You've got a 3028. Yep. You've got. I'm going to put this down here. Um, and uh, what other cameras do you use? So talk us through what you're using. So I'm shooting with uh, Canon 1D Mark IVs. 
Um, and then uh, I also shoot with the Mark III's and I also shoot with the Mark II N's. Um, and they all serve a different need for me. The game action is all the Mark IV's. Um, it's really, people come in here and obviously your light, uh, your eyes deceive you on how light it is, but the photographers know that it's dark building uh, when you're running off of, off of uh, stadium lights and the roofs closed a majority of the time that we shoot here. So um, what I get, I shoot the Mark IVs on 3200 ISO wow. um, and the pictures hold up fantastically. Um, I can get, the, the biggest thing in baseball for me is to try and stop that ball. Um, so a lot of times you may see baseball pictures with a blurred bat or the amateur is shooting their kids at a night baseball game and doesn't know why they can't get it with their rebel. Um, so the biggest thing is here is I can go up because I need as much shutter speed as I can get. Um, so I don't care about the aperture, two weight I can shoot at all day um, because that really knocks out that background, gives great compression with these lenses, really isolates the pitcher, the player. Um, whatever's closest to me that I'm shooting at that time. Well, let me ask you about the image stabilization because uh, I know image stabilization for some people they regard that as a must-have and a lot of photographers say well it doesn't make too much of a difference when I'm shooting on a monopod. Yeah. What's your what's your take on IS? IS, um, there's a common stigma in, in photography that we're paying a little too much for IS that we don't ever use. Most guys tape it down and I'm actually surprised that the tape's off there. Yeah. Um, but for the most part it's, it's off for us. There's a few times when we want to shoot that, that blurred picture that we're shooting at a 25th of a second where we want to put that ISO on pan mode right, um, this guy. and we pan across just a little while the pitcher's shooting but there's only certain pictures you can do that with. Randy Johnson was a good one, kept his head still while his arm was moving. You got a pretty cool shot of that. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part IS stays off because when we're looking through when you put IS on, the picture jumps a little bit. We've got to be able to focus right, you know, real, real specific focusing. When you're shooting yourself, you're shooting one camera at a time. Yeah. Um, and then do you do some remote shooting as well? So using some pocket wizards? To Absolutely, I use pocket wizards. I actually have the 400 um, on my front and I actually wear the 70 to 200. I always have two cameras on my person at a time because if I'm shooting a 400 and our, our photo wells are right there, which we'll show you, um, home plate is really close. It's really too tight and you're gonna miss the shot if you have it with a 400. There's numerous times where I've missed a really, really great shot because either we couldn't get our 7200 over in time or we're just shooting with the 400 that day. So I use the R strap, I, I have it on me. It's almost like a, a, a gun that I can pull up. I hold it off to one hand, I can pull up and shoot with this and I can get the close action. Normally I'm going to pre-prep myself if there's somebody on third base with less than two outs. We know there's a good chance it's a play at the plate. That's a great action shot. So I'm, I know that about 135, 140 is where I need to be. I, I set my shutter speed down a little bit so that I can get more depth of field because you want to try and get both of them in and so I'm ready to go. So a lot of it's, a lot of it's um, anticipating the action for what we and do. To learn that kind of stuff, you know at 135, 140, uh, millimeters um, to know what depth of field, what aperture mm -hmm. value, all that kind of stuff. That comes from practice, practice, practice. Practice. It, it's taken me, I can do it in my sleep at this point and I know that there is a third of a stop difference from home plate to the pitcher's mound and there's two thirds depending on the night. If the roof's open and there's a little ambient light coming in, um, if it's a day game on Sunday there's a little more ambient light coming in. So I've gotten pretty good at knowing between the outfield um, second base, the pitcher's mound, and home plate where I need to be. For the most part, it's all within a third to two thirds of a stop. Awesome. Well, we're going to go take a look at uh, where you shoot and what do you call yeah. that? Just it's the, the photo wells. The photo wells. We're going to go see the photo wells and we're going to take a look at uh, your remote shooting rig to see how that's done with a uh, magic arm and some pocket wizards. Yep. And uh, we'll just learn a little bit more. So let's head out there. Sounds good. So John, we're here in the photo well, and we're actually in the visitor's uh, dugout, basically. Yep. So why not in the home player's dugout? Well, what in baseball, uh, all the action comes from, comes towards first base. So um, we're shooting this so way. So when we're shooting, we're shooting out at Stephen Drew coming our way, Mark Reynolds throwing the ball our way. If we want to get the profile shot, we'll go to the other one. If we have a right-handed pitcher, I'll, I'll shoot a few innings out of the other photo well to get the angle from you know where he's opened up to me. Um, if we're shooting a left-handed pitcher, mostly we're over here. If you come to a game and you watch, a lot of times you'll see a majority of the photographers spread out during the first few innings, but everybody kind of ends up right here because that's really where the big plays in baseball, the double play, 
uh, guys jumping over each other, the shots from this angle, and plays at the plate if you're the home team or whoever's coming in. That's a great shot from well. this. Um, and then if I'm looking for the catcher sometimes, but we never know when that's going to happen, so it's a toss-up. So uh, I see you have a Multimax on here. Papa yeah. was your Multimax. Absolutely. So tell me why you have this on here. Obviously, uh, well, not obviously. Are you shooting strobes in? I'm no. Not, a lot right? of people ask me that because they go to um, a basketball game and they'll see the fire, you know, the pop, right. strobes popping. Um, but we've figured it out and would probably take 50 to 75 strobes to light this place up, and we just can't do that. MLB rules are against it. They even yell at people if you're sitting in the first three rows have, having a flash. So right. no flash photography is allowed in the photo wells or anywhere else. So what do you use in the pocket? So this is actually connected to my remote cameras. This right over here? Um, so which is right over here. Check that out. This is just an example of, of kind of what I do um, when I set up a remote. A lot of times I'm going to be setting a remote up in the catwalk um, so I can shoot down on home plate. Um, and those shots are great. The, the editors and magazines, they love them because it's a very different angle that not every ballpark can get and we're pretty lucky here to be able to do that. There's a lot of times I'll set them up down at the end uh, facing out towards second base for a double play um, and there's a lot of times I'll set them up down behind home plate which is a really cool angle of, of you can see the outfield and you can see the bat coming off the ball really cool. So. Um, what I do is uh, we're at Pocket Wizard Multimax is on custom channels um, and then I have them on actually both of my cameras. If I have three cameras on me, I'll, I'll put them on all three. So that way I'm always firing these cameras at the same time. So just in case. Yep, absolutely. And what I do is, like this one is just an example, but we're set up with the magic arm. Um, we've got the Pocket Wizard Multimax and the pre-trigger cord. Uh, this is a Mark II N, which are kind of my go-tos for my uh, remotes. Uh, if I need more ISO, I'll go to my Mark III's. Um, so and then, these guys, yep. tell me about the, the focus, because that's a, the pre-release trigger, uh, trigger there. Are you on uh, autofocus AI servo or are you just pre-focus manually? Pre-focus manually, yeah. If you autofocus, it's going to be searching the whole time. Right. So we pre-focus everything. We'll tape everything down and then we'll go recheck ourselves before. And a lot of times I'll power this, um, power this up because the pre-trigger keeps that um, the camera on the whole time. Now you tape it down because there's, with all, you know, yeah. 40 or 50,000 people, however many are showing up here, how many does this hold? 70,000? 50,000. 50,000 yeah. people. Okay. That's going to cause maybe some vibration that could throw things out of yep. focus. And if we're on the roof, anytime the roof opener closes, it's major vibration. So, gotcha. Yep. Taping awesome. it down just to, uh, just to make sure. Just to make sure. And that super clamp doesn't slip at all? No. We, we tighten it down so hard and sometimes we'll put some gaff tape underneath it just to make sure it doesn't move. Well, I had a lot of fun hanging out at the dugout with John Willie. Remember, you can see more of his work at johnwillie.com. And as always, if you have suggestions for how they do that, maybe a photographer you'd like to see us interview, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. And for just a wealth of information of uh, photography tips and all the past episodes of how they do that, please look at the Adorama Learning Center for more information. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.